King Charles has the most surprisingly frugal mealtime rule. Queen Camilla's son gave a peek into dinner with the royals. It's easy to imagine that King Charles's life is full of luxury and excess, but even with rumors of him being known as the pampered prince before he ascended to the throne, things have apparently changed behind the golden gates of Buckingham Palace. According to Queen Camilla's son, food critic and author Tom Parker Bowles, the monarch has a strict rule when it comes to mealtime, and it's not about caviar or champagne. Apparently, Charles won't stand for wasting food, and requests that any leftovers get served the next day or used again in another meal. Hello viewers, please remember to subscribe and click on the notifications bell icon, so you will be notified whenever we upload new cookies about the British royal family. There is no waste, everything is recycled, everything is used from the table, Parker Bowles told the Mirror. If anything is left over from the dinner, that will be made into something else or appear the next day. Nothing's allowed to be thrown out. The Mirror notes that last year, Charles established the Coronation Food Project, which works to lift people out of food insecurity and reduce food waste. It's not the king just paying lip service, he practices what he preaches, Parker Bowles shared, before noting that the king has a fascination with food at every stage, from farm to table. He really is a food hero. To talk to him about the strange varieties of plums or pears or anything else is endlessly fascinating. Parker Bowles also gave some insight into his mother and stepfather's personal connection to the food they eat, saying that they're deeply competitive when foraging for mushrooms when they're at Balmoral. They're both very keen mycologists, and both know their mushrooms very, very well. This time of year, depending on rain, there's seps and chanterelles, he said. I go with my mother and there's a lot of fantastic mushrooming in Scotland. It's a shared pleasure. King Charles, set to ban historic word, during upcoming royal tour. King Charles is set to ban a historic word, during his upcoming royal tour with Queen Camilla, it has been claimed. The term walkabout will not be used on the King and Queen's tour of Australia and Samoa out of respect for Australia's indigenous communities. The phrase, coined by Queen Elizabeth II 54 years ago, is set to be replaced with opportunity to meet the public, out of respect for the customs and traditions of Aboriginal communities. The term has come to mean a member of the royal family meeting, and greeting well-wishers. However, it is used in Aboriginal culture when a person travels on foot into the bush in times of ritual, meditation, change, grief or coming of age. Therefore, the phrase will not be used by Buckingham Palace during the October trip, the first long-haul tour undertaken by the King since his diagnosis with cancer, according to reports in the Telegraph. This tour is understood to be the first trip where the term has been deliberately avoided. It will be Charles's first return to Australia and Samoa's king and the head of the Commonwealth. The tour has been adapted in line with doctor's advice, Buckingham Palace has confirmed. The nine-day visit will factor in some rest periods after the long-haul travel, and will not include any evening engagements in Australia. The king, who is receiving treatment for cancer at the age of 75, will undertake several engagements relating to the disease. Meanwhile, Queen Camilla, 77, will attend events for her key causes of preventing violence against women, and promoting literacy. Engagements will focus on acknowledging and honoring Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island culture and traditions. The King and Queen will attend a community barbecue, a staple of Australian culture, in Western Sydney, as well as learn about bushfire prevention and native plants. The tour was originally intended to include New Zealand, however, it was scaled back on medical advice. A Buckingham Palace spokesman said, We've had to, as you would with any visit, think about how you can ensure Their Majesty's energies are preserved to be at their best. There had been some hope earlier in the year for Their Majesties to be able to visit New Zealand. On doctor's advice, and in close consultation with the Australian and New Zealand governments, that wasn't able to take place. 
we had to make some difficult decisions about the program with the Australian government, about where their majesties can get to. In other news, the king is spending a quiet weekend in Royal Deeside to mark the second anniversary of his mother's death on Sunday. Queen Elizabeth passed away at Balmoral on September 8, 2022. According to Richard Eden, the Daily Mail's well-connected society diarist, the medical team are also staying at the estate for a meeting to discuss all health matters relating to the royal family. A medical source said, it's an important get-together. The king, 75, has been undergoing treatment for an unnamed form of cancer. The queen, 77, who returned to royal duties last week before heading back to Scotland, is thought to be in rude health. Her Majesty met Sandra Tyler and Jill Hitchman, who were both undergoing a chemotherapy session. Noticing that Sandra was wearing a specialist hat which helps to prevent hair loss, she remarked, you've got your ice cap on. Camilla also engaged in a light-hearted exchange with Paul Holdway, a 55-year-old nurse and patient undergoing a stem cell transplant to treat his blood cancer. When asked by Her Majesty, how are you feeling? Mr. Holdway replied, I am feeling very tired. The Queen responded with a touch of humour and said men won't admit it, in an apparent reference to her husband. She has made it clear she would prefer Charles to slow down during his treatment. The royal medical household is made up of a number of professionals at the top of their fields, who also usually work across the NHS and privately. Unlike other parts of the royal household, their names are not revealed publicly. In June, the King personally honoured his top medical team, including Dr. Michael Dixon, head of the Royal Medical Household, who was made a commander of the Royal Victorian Order, CVO. Dr. Fiona Butler, a West London GP whose royal role is apothecary to the King Dash and the Queen's physician Michael Dooley were made lieutenants of the Royal Victorian Order, LVO. A Buckingham Palace spokesman declined to comment on this weekend's medical conference. However, a royal source told Eden Confidential that the meeting is an annual event not related to the cancer treatment of the King or the Princess of Wales. Queen Camilla, 76, debuted the piece at the event, pinning it on her blue sash just above Queen Elizabeth's family order, which features a portrait of the late monarch on a yellow ribbon. Camilla received Queen Elizabeth's family order in 2007. Royal watchers have been waiting to see King Charles' family order since his accession in September 2022, and Queen Camilla is the first person to wear it. The tradition of commissioning a family order, a badge worn by female members of the royal family personally bestowed by the sovereign, was established by King George IV over 200 ago, Buckingham Palace said in a statement. Family orders have since been instituted by Queen Victoria, King Edward VII, King George V, King George VI and Queen Elizabeth II. Thanks for watching, please don't forget to like this video and drop comments, and most importantly don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything.